three, two, one. Good morning. This is Ellen Mongan, and I'm going to go tell the world a message today that is going to uplift your soul and make you want to be alive for Christ. Um, it took me 10 minutes to set up the, the new room. I'm in the same room, but a new setup, and it took me 10 minutes to get the room looking like I wanted. Who takes that time to take a look at your soul each day? You know, when I met Jesus, I was like seven years old, but I wasn't really... I wasn't really converted in my soul to him. I just knew he was real, and that was good. I thought he was real and dead on the cross. You see that cross behind me, it always reminds me how he's alive. And that if you follow him, he opens doors in your life to help you to become more like him. And that's what I'm talking today. I just heard Kirk Cameron on his podcast. It might have been an older one, but it was about how he found the Lord. And mine is easy. When I was seven years old, and I received the Lord in the Eucharist, I knew it was real. He began to guide my life. He began to tell me, <clears throat> lead me, and, and change me. Then about the time I was in high school, I wanted to be popular. Who does it? High school. But I want you to know if young people are listening out there, best to stay the course. Popularity comes and goes, but the walk with Jesus is eternal. So you don't want to be doing what I did. You learn from my mistakes. But about the time I got married to a, I was a stewardess in Miami, Florida, Air Florida, I got married to a man who was a med student who happened to be my student's roommate's cousin. I was so in love, and he was so in love back. We um we went on a month long honeymoon, and we brought and we came back, and um we didn't even know that um you could go for a month long honeymoon and not get pregnant. So we got pregnant on the honeymoon, and I was more shocked than anyone. And so then we had that little boy toddler, and then soon after that we had a little girl Terrellman. And the Mongan babies kept coming and coming. But right after Terrellin, I was so happy. I was like a suburban wife with uh, a boy and a girl and a doctor husband. And I thought, well, I'm so happy. I'll give my life back to Jesus. See, you fall away. It doesn't happen quickly. It happens slowly, like one step away, two steps away, three steps away. And soon you go, where to go? He hasn't left. You have. So I... I um. I went back to church. My, my brother-in-law, Kim Mongan Hanna, said, fine, charismatics. So I came back to the church, the charismatic renewal, which was very popular in the 70s. And I was very happy to see people that were excited about the Lord, just like me. And I, I began to walk with, the, with people and learn from people and read my scripture. And that's kind of how I started with the Lord. And I think that was 1974 when I got married. So maybe it was 76. And... Um, I had such a grand time, got to a lot of people, and then we, we moved to a place called Utah. It's in the, it's in the country of USA, <laughs> and then I walked kind of alone because I wasn't from Utah, and you know how people are, and so then I ended up getting closer and closer to God, and closer and closer to Jesus, and learning more about his word, and I came back a stronger Christian. We came back to the South, and so, so now, where are you now? So now, I've been walking the Lord almost 50 years like day in and day out as an adult you know we always have to come back to the lord as an adult we start as a child when i was a child i thought and act like a child but now that i'm an adult you have to have a mature understanding of christ and commit to walk with him every day to surrender every day so now i've been walking almost 50 years and i'm in full-time ministry along with my husband dk pat and he's he met the lord in utah which is another whole story i don't know if i'll ever tell it on the air but it involves me having a diamond ring which I gave away, and um, that we would find the Lord. It's on the stories on Woman of Grace and also Catholic Mom. But I was that kind of Christian because I went to a priest shortly after I came to know the Lord and the renewal. And I said, um, "Gee," um, he talked to me a little while, and he said, "Some people, some people just tiptoe into a pool. They just put their feet in, then half their body, then their whole body in their hands." And not me. I was the girl that took swim lessons when I was like in fifth grade. I couldn't swim. I did learn to dog paddle on those classes. And I would just run off the board and jump in and then dog paddle my slowest all the way to the edge. I could have drowned, but I had no fear. So the thing was, I was that kind of Christian as well. I did, I like adventure, you know, so I jumped off the board and there I was and in the midst of a charismatic renewal and living each day for Christ. God has done more for me in the years I've walked with him. He's taught me to write because I couldn't write at all. I was I'm the little kid that cried when I had to write a report for like English class. If I was like in middle school or grade and grade school. 
so he taught me to write. He taught me to get play me songs to sing, and I've written. And then he also gave me um, speaking places to speak. I speak on TV and radio. I've been many places, and I enjoy it all. Because, you know, if God opens the door, then you walk through it. And if he closes the door, you don't bang it down. I find the times that I want to do something that God's blocking with the door, it never works out for me. So I mean, my message today is that where did you meet Jesus? Or, better yet, <laughs> where did you leave Jesus? Some people walk for a while, and then they don't. Some people walk for a longer time, and then they don't. But I feel like staying the course with Christ, you never know what's ahead for you and what he could do with one yielded vessel. Oh, my goodness, he could do so much. So I'm always trying to, to encourage the body of Christ. Um, there was that, that, that scripture, the sower from the seed, where he put little seeds down in Georgia. He used to be a little older man that would give a scripture each day and talk about it. But some seeds fall on rocky ground. And then I ask you, if you're a rocky grounded person, you have the rocks and you haven't been able to grow, get around other Christians. That's how we grow. You know, personal prayer time, we grow with other people that love the Lord. And now there's some people fell on the on the weeds, you know. You gotta pluck those weeds. Get around. Family members will often try to help you pluck your weeds. <laughs> They're phenomenal for that. They know what you really well and they can help you out with that. Um some 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 people flourished. Pat and I have brought many people to the Lord through our witness, but mostly God has used us to accompany people when they're going through a hard time. Sometimes God will have a person in your life for a season, and sometimes I'll have a person in your life for your whole entire life. I try to keep friends with everybody that I knew from the beginning, from when I was the little girl in kindergarten to, to um, end of high school that moved around almost every year. But you can't do that. So I keep, I like, I'm kind of like that gal that when God puts someone on my heart, I'll pray for you. If someone puts someone on my heart and they're going through a hard time, I send the card or a letter. And if, if someone doesn't come on my heart, sometimes I just, I haven't forgotten you, but I just wait, you know, because you really can't, you can love the one person right in front of you. I've been talking about that a lot. Like Mother Teresa says, love the person right in front of you. So today the message of is that what is your testimony? Where did you leave Jesus? And how can you get back to a closer walk with him? You know, Paul had to come off his horse. He fell right off his horse, although some will debate that there was a horse. He had to come off his pride, really. And Peter did as well. And then what do you have to come off of to get close to Jesus? I heard a talk this morning about forgiveness. Sometimes forgiveness will block you in your walk. It says a root of bitterness will stop you, and you don't want to have that. You want to walk with eyes open wide to see God everywhere. One time I wrote a poem. It was called Through the Eyes of Jesus I Can See. A whiny child is saying, please love me. You can look through something that seems kind of bleak, and it, when, when God puts in your spirit the love of Christ and his word, you can look at it through different eyes. See, I'm looking at rainy days in Georgia, but you know what? The good news is it's going to be a cool day to go for a walk or do something outdoors. So I hope you're listening today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beg you this time. It's on my YouTube channel. I didn't know that this was important, so I, I did, I'm going to try to get some more exposure. But you saw my YouTube channel, which is Ellen Mongan. I do three podcasts. One is called Wow Mom. For moms, it's also for dads. The one that's called Deacon and Deer. And my newest one is Go Tell the World. And what happens on that podcast, I have 12 hosts from all different ministries around the country. And they come on with me. This this month coming up, I'm going to have two ladies, one from Ohio and, and two from Georgia, that are going to talk about the ministry of Damascus. It's going to be phenomenal. And so, today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I'm going to try to end at 10, like the top 10 words. <laughs> Maybe 1,001. And then that way you'll know that when I get on, you won't have to listen forever. <laughs> I love to listen to podcasts. Everyone always says to me, my main comment is, um, your podcasts are a little long. But you know what? Sometimes someone listening is wanting for that last sentence. You know, I try to listen for the Lord as I'm giving this right now, as I'm speaking. Tell them what the Lord wants to say. say. And sometimes that last sentence that you didn't want to hear, they were waiting for. So you just really don't know. You know, so I... I just want to say I enjoy doing this. I enjoy meeting people. If you want to email me, it's wowellen at yahoo.com. And right behind me, I often say, you know, look at the, the path behind you to the beach there. It, my path to the beach is always narrow. I always run towards the beach. But um, the way is narrow if you ever find it. And then I want to end with lastly, because it is, this is about testimony. One day I had a dream about my friend Sue Stinger. She was a wonderful mentor to me. And she was up in heaven in a rocking chair. That's how the three went. And she said to me, Ellen, 
Blessed are he who washes his robe to eat from the tree of life. And I said, wow, I want to have clean white robes like a bride ready to meet my, my husband, my, my beloved, my Jesus. And she said, blessed are he who washes his robe to eat from the tree of life. And then she said a third time, blessed are he, you need me to write that down. She said three times, blessed is he who washes his robes to eat from the tree of life. Now is the time, bride of Christ, to get those ro robes spotless, spotless and clean, like a bride going down the aisle, and iron them. Get out all the wrinkles. Don't let anybody put spots on your on your white gown. Clean your day and your heart every day for Jesus. He's waiting for you to meet with him, and you know what? It's going to be glorious. I'm not talking about heaven. Eternal life is this, knowing Christ Jesus our Lord here on earth. So please, get to know him, and if you've walked away, run back to him. Have a great day. Again, Ellen Mongan from Wow, El, wow, El, wow. Well, Mongan from Go Tell the World. I do make mistakes. I call them bloopers and I always let them go because you know what? We're all human. And if I made the perfect tape, y'all would be able to look at it and say, you know what she said? You said that three times. <laughs> See you later and have a good one.